Good morning. Good morning. That was my cue. <laughs> and, okay. and I know I'm late. Um, but here we are now, and uh, we light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world, being in our midst. We remember also that Jesus said, You are the light of the world. So while this provides illumination and inspiration for us throughout our worship service today, uh, when it is extinguished at the end of our service, the light does not go out. We go out into the world as the light, carrying that illumination and inspiration. I also, um, just as a reminder, light two of the Advent candles from, that we have in this, uh, this four weeks leading up to Christmas, the Advent season. We uh, have lit the first week the candle of hope, and last week, nope, yep, hope, peace, joy, love. So hope was the first week, peace was last week, as uh, uh, our friends told us, and uh, this week you'll hear all about it. So <laughs> it's coming up. And uh, you can be ready to sing the uh, Emmanuel response uh, on the uh, insert. You have lots of wonderful inserts in the bulletin today. Um, so don't say we didn't ever give you anything. <laughs> it is good to be with you, and well, welcome to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ, and Reconciling Ministries Congregation. We are a congregation that strives to live up to the motto, the modern motto, of the United Church of Christ that says, whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And uh, in the midst of doing that, we are intentional about being welcoming to all who welcome all. We are intentional to understand that we are people that come from a wide variety of backgrounds and uh, 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 um, differences that we can celebrate. Diversity is a better word. We know that uh, there are people among us uh, who come from various political perspectives, educational experience, financial status. We know that there are people among us that come from uh, a wide range of geography from coast to coast and north to south. We know that there are people who come actually from across the oceans. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we know that there are people with us from all parts of God's creation. And in the midst of that, we welcome people who are straight and gay and bisexual because we know that sexual orientation is a good gift of God and a part of creation. We also know that we welcome people from a gender identity standpoint that they wish to be identified so that we are not foisting an, identi an identity on someone, but rather we welcome you as you see yourself from the inside out. Now also today we welcome our friends, our three and four footed friends. Um, we welcome uh, uh, all of God's creatures and we also celebrate the ones here uh, who weren't able to make it in person. Uh, but they're with us in spirit. As I always say, if you can't be with us in body, be with us in spirit. Now last night, at, I was at a concert, and I told somebody that today for Bloom, other church, many other churches do a blessing of the animals on the Feast of St. Francis, which is in October. And um, we, we try to do things that make us not be like other churches, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, so I was talking with uh, Reverend Dr. Terry Lennon when she was with us one day, and I said, how can we do an Animal Blessing Sunday and not just basically be in the crowd? And she said, do it in Advent. Come to the manger. And so that's been our uh, symbol and our expression um, uh, every time. I also note that we write this into our lease on this space, that we are allowed to violate the rules of the building one day a year, uh, and have animals inside the building. Uh, for, uh, someone, a friend, a good friend, I think sort of unknowingly threw me sh some shade last night about animal blessing uh, in church. And I was like, I, I, to be honest, sort of surprised um, about that. But I reminded this person that um, God's covenant with Noah, the rainbow covenant that we celebrate as the covenant of um, uh, inclusion, uh, intentionally states that God's covenant of love is with every living creature. And 
so therefore that is a part of what we do today and we'll look forward to that bring our hearts and soul and mind and strength together for worship megan and jack cassette will come forward and lead us in the lighting of the advent candle uh, this is a part of our tradition and a part of the heritage of our christian church and we also um, when that is completed we will sing together the Emmanuel response that you have. The third Advent candle is a symbol of joy. We joyfully light this candle as we anticipate our celebration of the birth of the Christ child. Like the Bible story characters, we feel awe and wonder hearing the news of the coming miracle filled. Like them, we receive angels, hear the prophets, and act in faith. Our actions in faith give glory to God. Our hearts sing out praise. God lifts up, <clears throat> lifts up the lowliest in many marvelous ways. Even stable animals and family pets sense the excitement. God moves in the world to bring justice for all, especially for the poor and weak. New ways of thinking and doing become clear with the light God shines through Christ. God's dream is really coming. With this candle, we rejoice that God breaks through into our world in surprising and life-changing ways. Please rise as you are able and join me in the responsive call to worship. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. We are gathered to worship our Creator. God gave us eyes to see them and lips that might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. In this hour, we are nourished by our Creator and each other. Our purpose now is to bring the world of God's promise. Shalom, Salaam, Iman, Paz, Peace, Amen. In this time in our worship, when in faith we open our hearts to ministry, prayer for good and growth. On this day, when we come to the manger to bless our animal friends, let us pray from the depths of our humanity the prayer of St. Francis responsibly. Lord, Make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to be consoled. To understand as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in harmony that we are hardened. And it is in dying that we are born eternally to live e to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Loving Creator of all wonderful counsel for everyone, hear now our sincere and silent prayer. To all of our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. Amen. Our relationship with creation can mirror God's love and bountiful care. We are ready to reflect the love of Jesus, our friend and God's servant, St. Francis. Amen. Amen. Let us now receive the word.
morning. Good morning. The uh, scripture reading comes to us today from Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. You are my deliverer, O God. I trust you, and I am no longer afraid of you. You are my strength and my refuge. You are my deliverer. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And on that day, you will say, give thanks to Yahweh. Invoke God's holy name. Make known among the people what Yahweh has done. Proclaim that God's name is exalted. Sing praises to Yahweh, for God has triumphed. Let this be known throughout the world. Cry out, shout aloud. You who dwell in Zion, for the Holy One of Israel dwells among us in majesty. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. of the Gospel. Today's Gospel reading comes to us from Luke, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. When the people asked him, what should we do? John replied, let the one with two coats share with the one who has none. Let those who have no food, who have food, do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what are we to do? John answered them, Exact nothing over and above your fixed amount. Soldiers likewise asked, What about us? John told them, Don't bully anyone. Don't accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were full of anticipation, wondering in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you in water, but someone is coming who is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not fit to untie. The one, this one, will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. A winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and gather the wheat into the granary, but the chaff will be burnt in unquenchable fire. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. speaker for today on this topic and she will be um, uh, she's also coordinating with the Jolly Singers in, in one of the songs that they're going to do. When we came, were discussing in the worship team this uh, particular Sunday it just uh, uh, Marilyn expressed an interest in having some thoughts to share and you know being the totally uncontrolling and laissez-faire kind of person that I am um, I said well that's great so uh, the only thing is make sure you say something about joy. And about two weeks ago she came and said to me, now what was that word I was supposed to say something about? And, she said, and I said joy, and she said, yeah, I can do that. So we're, we're happy 
for that. We also know that Marilyn has invited in her role as a Nurture and Community Life uh, um, uh, coordinator in our community speakers time, uh, invited her friend Jalinda Schwartz to be with us during hospitality time for a little time of um, uh, uh, talk and uh, Q&A. Uh, as, as all of us, all the beasts and the children uh, assembled um, in that time together. But uh, I now um, welcome you to uh, this, this, uh, this, this role. Come on over. Why am I here? The noises. The smells, they're so different. There's so many of us, dogs and cats, puppies, kittens, all the same, but different. There's big ones and small ones. Puppies on their hind legs at the windows begging for attention. The kittens rolling and frogging, playing, not noticing, but people <coughs> noticing. They're noticing their precious faces. They're noticing their silky hair and the people. Tap, tap, tap on the windows as they go by, trying to get attention of the little ones, the little ones that are waiting, and the big ones are waiting, and the frightened ones that are waiting, the ones that are lost that are waiting. Tap, tap, tap all day long. It startled me at first. Now I don't look up. I watch across the hall the big gray cat. He's in the window, but he's curled up. He doesn't hardly move, and his tail covers his face. I know what he's thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. It's the young ones the puppies and the kittens. It's the pretty ones and big strong ones. They're the ones that get picked. So I lay in the corner and I lay there with my thoughts. I think about my dad and what we do. I think about the walks we take and I think about the people we meet. My dad is such a talker. He has so much to talk about with everybody he sees, and I listen. My dad, my dad, I miss him. I miss him a lot. He says it's best when I'm with him when we go on the walks, when we go to the store, when we go to the patio outside the restaurant. He says that's the best because that's when people see him. When he's alone, he says they don't see him at all. When I'm with him, he says, even the crabby ones look up. <laughs> they reach down to pet me, and they say, oh, she's so sweet. What's her name? And my dad says, Angel. He never corrects them. He never tells them, I'm not a she, I'm a he. <laughs> he says, that's OK. At least they stop to chat. My dad and I have a special thing we do together. We go to the library. When we walk in the library, everyone knows us, everyone greets us, and they act like they're happy to see us. We go and my dad sits in that big chair right in front of those windows, and I sit down by his feet. I've got my nose against the glass. He's got papers and books and everything all around him. But that doesn't stop him from talking, talking to the people on the left and talking to the people on the right in quiet, hushed tones. I sit there and I look at the birds and the rabbits and all the critters that are around. And one time I barked really loud. I startled myself and I startled everybody else. My dad said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't bark in the library. If you bark in the library, they are going to take our pass and we'll never get to come again. So I don't bark in the library. <laughs> We're spending less time 
on our walks now. We're slowing down, Dad and I. I don't mind. We spend a lot more time in the library. I should have known there was something wrong. My dad sat down on the step. He pulled me to him. And all of a sudden there was this confusion. There were people around us. They were yelling. They were saying, get away, get away, give him some air. Put they were pushing me, they were pushing me away. Didn't they understand? Couldn't I convey to them, these strangers, this was my dad. There was more confusion and more people came and pretty soon they picked him up and they put him in a big truck. And I didn't get to go with them, they held me back. Somebody said, who's this dog? The library lady was there and she said, that's his dog. And some said, someone said, well, I'll take them. I'll take them to the shelter. So I've been here for a long time, just like the gray cat. But I know when my dad comes, he is not going to tap, tap, tap on the window. He is going to say, Angel, come on, boy, we're going home. I was gutted. I couldn't believe it. He wasn't ever sick. He didn't slow down. When the doctor came out and said they worked on him for 45 minutes and they couldn't bring him back, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He just retired not even a year ago. We had made plans. We were going to travel. We were going to sell our house. We'd already listed it. We were going to downsize. And Ray said, we were going to take trips. He said, we're going to go across the country and we're going to see all 50 states. And I said, Ray, there are 52 states. And he said, when I was in school, there are 50 states. <laughs> Ray didn't like change. What happened was my sadness, it changed. It turned to anger. I had so much anger, and I had a hole in my heart. I felt no joy, and I had no faith that things were going to be different. My friends, they gathered around me. They tried to get me to do things. Come on, let's go out to dinner. Let's join for coffee, all the girls together. They called me all the time until I got to a point where I didn't answer the phone. And then one day I realized, the only time I opened my mouth and said anything was at the market when I said thank you to the cashier. One day, I was sitting and I saw a little ad in the paper. And it said the local shelter needed blankets and towels. Well, I certainly had a lot of those. So I handed them the blankets and the towels. And the girl was very, very nice. She said, thank you profusely, we really needed these. But while you're here, why don't you take a look around? Take a look around at our shelter, we're proud of it. And we've got lots of animals for you to see. I didn't care to see any animals. There wasn't going to be animals in my life. I was an alone person. I was me. I used to be we, but now I'm me. So I took that walk around the shelter and when I went down that hall, I was shocked. How could there be so many? They were all over. There were big ones and little ones. There were dogs and there were cats, so many kittens. There were rabbits and there were birds. I looked around and I thought, all of these animals need a home. I walked around and I saw a little guy. He was in the back of his kennel, a little brown, kind of scruffy little guy. I read his card. His kennel card said, male, 
approximately nine years old, it said that he was neutered, and it said he was friendly, and he was housebroken, and he was surrendered. His parent died. He died. And I stood there looking at this little guy, and finally he looked up at me, and that face, that face wasn't even sad. That face was blank. That face was like he had nothing left. And I looked at him, and I said, that's my face. Well, somebody came up to me. I guess she was an attendant. She said, oh, you're looking at him. He's so sweet. Everybody looks at him, but they go on. They all want the puppies. They want the kittens. They want the big, strong dogs or the fluffy little dogs. But they don't want the older dogs. I try and tell them, the puppies and the kittens are hard. The puppies chew on your furniture. They take your shoe and you don't know where it is, so now you've just got one. The kittens, they climb up your curtains. These young ones are hard. You gotta train them. They're gonna potty on your carpet. They're not gonna walk well on your leash and they're not gonna come when you call them. As I filled out the adoption papers, <laughs> there were a lot of questions. I guess I answered them all right. And I said a little prayer. I said, Ray, please guide me to do the right thing. Well, as I was walking out of the shelter, I realized they hadn't told me his name. I turned around and I said, what, what have you named him? And the girl kind of sheepishly looked at me and she said, well, we call him nobody. Nobody. She said, yeah, nobody ever looked at him and for some reason we started calling him nobody. So nobody and I got in the car. Nobody sat in the passenger seat. He didn't whine, he didn't whimper, he didn't bark. He just sat there looking out the window. When we got home, he sniffed everything, every room. He sniffed looking for somebody, I think. Well, it was time to feed him, so I opened the bag that the shelter had given me. I opened it up and I looked and I said, Nobody would eat this. <laughs> so I took a bite. It tasted like, it tasted like sawdust. Actually, it tasted like diet food. <laughs> that night, nobody and I had scrambled eggs. <laughs> when it was time to go to bed, I made him a little pallet. I put it in the den. He seemed to know it was his. He laid down, he curled up. I said, good night, good night, nobody. And I went to bed. When I got up that morning, there he was still on that little pallet. And you know, his tail did this, just once. I leashed him up. I said, I guess I gotta go out. I got myself dressed. We went out, we walked down the block, we walked around the corner. There were other people walking their dogs, jogging, people out there. And when they looked at me, they saw me. They smiled and I smiled back. And every day we did this until finally they got familiar. I started to say, say something to them. Now I said, good morning. And they said, good morning too. And then they said, oh, she's so sweet. What's her name? And I said, nobody. Well, after I did that a few times and people looked at me like I was a little bit cracked, <laughs> I dropped the no and I called him Buddy. So Buddy and I went everywhere. Buddy was great. Buddy behaved. Buddy walked on that leash. Buddy didn't bark. Buddy and I went to the store. Buddy and I went to the restaurants. We sat outside in the patio and everyone noticed us. Not just Buddy, but they were talking to me too. And then I started picking up that phone, and I started calling my friends. And I said, let's go out for coffee. 
I want you to meet Buddy. I did a lot of things. I did a lot of things with Buddy. And you know what? That hole, that hole I had in my heart, that anger that I felt, that I thought I would never ever get rid of, it was starting to fill up. And it was starting to fill up with joy. I had faith once again. I had faith that things were going to be different. That my life was going to be on another journey. And you know, the favorite thing we did together, Buddy and I, we went to the library. We sat in the library. I read, I read the newspapers cover to cover. I never had time to do that before. Buddy sat on the floor beside me, his nose right up against the window. But he was so good. All those critters jumping around, the rabbits, the birds, the little lizards. Buddy never barked. Buddy was the perfect dog. And now I have somebody. I have somebody to care for. I have somebody to love. I said a prayer when I got Buddy. I said a prayer to Ray, please help me, please tell me what to do, am I making the right decision? And you know what Ray did? He sent me down an angel. He sent me down an angel in the form of a, a carrier mix, male, housebroken, neutered, loves to travel, wants to see all 50 states. <laughs>
the buddies, I thank each and every one of you for loving them, for nurturing them, for bringing in, them into your lives. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. Introduce their owners. Um, oh, and we'll do it the other way around. So if you care to um, introduce who you have here with you, we will uh, go around the room here so we don't miss anyone. I also want to note, if you do, if you are seated someplace and you want to particularly know, and you want to particularly note to me, uh, not to me, but to the, our group, who is represented on the table there, feel free to do that as well. And be sure and uh, pass by the table um, later in our worship service. But uh, Russ, can we start with you? And who do you have with you today? I have Buddy and I have Elton. Steve? I've got Joe and I've got Russ. Oh, Joe, what's the matter? <laughs> there we go. Marilyn, who's who's happy to see you? Well, happy to see me is Skipper. Can we go this way? Sure. Who's there? Just speak this, up. This is Evie. There's Evie and Nancy. Yeah. Have, oh, here. Who do you have here, Tilda? Bruno. Bruno. Bruno is very fierce. <laughs> <laughs> Other pets yeah, among the folks or on the table that you want to know? Uh, uh, Craig and Jean? You saw me with Oliver Twist when I did my reading. We also have Mimi and Courtney with us. Okay. And Spirit, uh, Luke, and Cork Jewel, and all the other ones. There you have it. Well, look who's here from Maine. And Coco is here for me. We got Coco just a year ago at the shelter nearby. Yes, ma'am. This is Gabriel. Gabriel. Sitting today's a little nervous. He just started breathing. I think I did too. He's very invited by his friends, Skippy and Evie. There you go. We have here. Er, uh, Hey, Jimmy. I have a uh, beautiful picture of uh, Matthew Mark. Um, your cat. Your cat, Matthew Mark. Your picture up here. Uh, Jim, Malcolm. Yes, this is uh, Gizmo, and next to Gizmo is Sid. There we go. This is Ben here. Ebenezer Caesar Schnauzer. <laughs> 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 Other there, here we go, here in the... I have uh, Casey, Josie, Fredo, and Molly. Casey, Josie, Fredo, and Molly? Yeah, Fredo. Fredo. Yes, there are those. Pardon me? Noodles. Noodles? Noodles. Noodles. Yes, noodles. <laughs> Did we miss? We, we oh, yes. and this is Winston Lucy. was here. There we go. Here, Lucy. Lucy. Yes, sir. And this is Shadow. Shadow. Great. Chip and Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they were like a quarter of this. Uh, others. Here we go. Yes. I have Casey. He's thirteen. He's a National Agility Champion, and he is my Velcro dog. He's always in the room with me wherever I am. <laughs> the other of my dogs back there, uh, Josephine, which Len explains, she runs the house. <laughs> and Frito is a rescue found in the dumpster at the school where I do my volunteer teaching. And we have an additional dog, White Molly, who's a therapy dog. <laughs> Thank you. And he just sat down patiently for while we've been sitting. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yes, yes. This is Golda the Adventure Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, looks the part. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, yes. In the buggy, he had Nick. In a front of Yes, yes, ma'am. My dog is at home, but her picture's up there. Her name is Sammy. Sammy? Yes, yes. I have an 11-year-old golden retriever whom I found running in the streets when she was nine months old, and she is the best companion I've ever owned. Oh, she's owned me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want 
Sasha and Yuri are two tabbies, uh, Russian immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> We've had for 11, 10, 11 years now. And their photos are over here. Other photos, yes, ma'am. Waddles over there. Waddles and Lucky and Champagne and Trixie and Peewee. <laughs> There's Winston. Winston's in the back there. There we are. Oh, is Winston going to make an appearance? Hello, Winston. <laughs> There you are, shy. Winston's very shy. A hugger. Yes, yes, yes. So we have Faith and Baby, our two little dogs, as well as two cats, Hello and Gigi. <laughs> the, uh, hello and goodbye. Our next two cats could be Hello and Goodbye. Yes, Daryl. So many memories. Yeah. Igor, Murphy. Jeff Bell, Precious, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Others that you want to note? Jim Nixon. Jim Nixon. Well, I have uh, Zoe at home and her brother, Che Guevara, who left us about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Others you'd like to note? Yes, yes. Bill? Uh, Niner, the uh, late great German trader. Niner has a picture here. Yes. And Donya, who um, was also abandoned in four weeks. Mm -hmm. For Donya? Any others? Yes. I have a picture of Cooper on my phone. On my dog. Yes, Cooper, you bet. Yes, sir, yes, Jim. Teddy Bear, great star line for 18 years. Wow, wonderful. Others, yes, sir. Uh, Monty, my uh, red standard poodle, he's two years old. He's at home because he needs exercise and a little, little uh, anxious this morning. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. We each have a son dog, and so we talk about your son and my son. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, my Frankie dog is at home. It was too much to have to hear. Yeah. That's it's okay. We'll remember Frankie. You bet. Okay. You bet. Others. There's a blue sheet in your bulletin. There's a phrase here on the top of the page that says, Priesthood of all believers, blessing your animals. In the Protestant tradition of which we are a part, um, it was understood that there is no, no one needs to stand between us and God. That, that we are all priests, and it's a 16th century concept called the priesthood of all believers. You don't hear about that a lot in the newspaper these days, but it still functions. So we in this congregation um, function in worship in the concept of the priesthood of all believers. We do this together. And so the blessing is not a blessing of me touching heads, but we share in that kind of action in a sense that we uh, here practice that um, owners bl will bless their pets. So on this uh, form here, if you will join in with us, Marilyn and I will read the parts that are um, not bolded and um, you are uh, uh, read the, the, the bolded part, but you know here um, that uh, you're, you're very welcome to, you know, don't talk to us, talk to your pet uh, when we're doing this, whether in person here or in, in your own heart, feel free to do that. So um, let us join together. Gracious God, our Creator, from your sacred breath, forth birds came birds and beasts, fish and fowl, creatures of such variety and beauty that we continually are amazed at your divine imagination. These children of yours have been blessed by you, our Creator, with simplicity, beauty, and purpose by Jesus in all love for all creatures. May we, in this pattern, now bless our pets, and animal friends of yours by taking delight in their spirit and beauty. May we bless them with all thy protections for all that may harm them. May we, like Adam and Eve, speak to these creatures of yours the kindness and affection, appreciating their presence in our world. May, may we never treat them 
as dumb animals, but rather let us seek to learn their language and to be students of all the secrets that they know. And may the blessing of God rest upon these creatures who are companions with us in the journey of our life. To you saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. with one another in such a way we pray together the prayer given to us from Jesus using words most comforting and familiar to you praying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of sending is number one.